Good afternoon, or good morning, everyone, still. We're going to get started. For those, I, my name's Jeff Farrell. I'm the, the veteran service officer for the town. I want to welcome everyone to our 2024 Veterans Day celebration. Thank you for everyone who served. Um, just a quick update for me on the veterans benefit side. If you haven't heard, the HERO Act was just signed into law not too long ago. Uh, it opens up benefits for someone who maybe wasn't considered a veteran before. So if you have any questions, feel free to find me uh, today or in our office. Um, and up first, we're gonna call the color guard up. Would everyone please rise as the colors enter? Okay, thank you to our Northboro Legion Color Guard. Up next is Kendra Feldetta, the Senior Center Director. Hi, 
I know, I know. I took the step uh, instead of climbing up the ramp like I encourage everyone else to do. So uh, please be seated. Welcome to the North Bro Senior Center. I'm Kendra Feldetta, I'm the director here. I just have a few things that I would like to say uh, as we continue on our Veterans Day uh, at lunch. So it's a profound honor to stand here before you today as we gather to express our deepest gratitude to the veterans who served our nation with such courage, dedication, and unwavering commitment. To our veterans, your sacrifices have ensured it, the freedoms we all enjoy every single day. Whether you served during times of conflict or peace, your bravery and selflessness are the foundation of our country. You have given so much, often more than we can ever truly know. Your willingness to defend and protect the values that define us as a nation is something we simply cannot thank you enough for. We often hear the word sacrifice when we speak about our veterans, but I think it's important to reflect on what that truly means. Sacrifice isn't just about the time you served in uniform or the battles you may have fought. It's about the birthdays and holidays you missed, the times away from loved ones, and the countless memories, at the countless moments where you put the mission ahead of your own needs. It is, it is about the lifelong impact that service has had on you and your families. These sacrifices that most of us will never fully understand, but we certainly honor. You have shown us the true meaning of service. You've stood up for what's right. You've been resilient in the face of adversity. You've exemplified what it means to serve a greater cause than oneself. For that, you are our heroes, not just, not just in words, but in action. You are the reason we can live in a country where liberty, opportunity, and justice prevail. As we gather today, I want to remi remind us all that expressing gratitude to our veterans should not be limited to ceremonies or designated days, that freedoms we hold de so dear come from your sacrifices, and it is our responsibility as a community to carry forward the values you fought for. We must honor veterans every day through our actions by ensuring that you receive the support, care, and recognition you so rightfully deserve. Today is not just about remembering the past, but about looking forward to the future with the lessons you've given us. You've shown us that sacrifice, honor, and duty are not just words, but values to live by. You are the living embodiment of those principles. In the words of John F. Kennedy, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Let us all be inspired by your example and live in a way that honors the sacrifices you have made. We have so much to learn from you about courage, commitment, and community. So today, on behalf of everyone here, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your service, thank you for your sacrifices, and thank you for showing us what it truly means to be an American. Your service will never be forgotten, and your legacy will continue to inspire us for generations to come. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you have done and continue to do. Thank you also for everyone participating in the Veterans Day luncheon today. Jeff, Melissa, John, the Legion, and North Bro Cable especially, and all of the volunteers and the staff in the kitchen that made today possible. All right. Thank you. And I should have brought this up with me. So. <laughs> um, so we are now going to play the anthem of each branch. If you are able, please stand when your branch is called and for the duration of the song. Um, and we are going to start with the Army Anthem.
Up next is the Navy. Next is the Marines. Up next is the Coast Guard. And last but not least is the Air Force. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Someone has to go last. I'd like to welcome Jeff back up here. Thank you. Okay, so don't worry, you don't have to listen to me speak again this year. Uh, I'm going to in introduce Melissa Longren, our speaker. Um, she enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserves in 2018 as a behavioral health specialist um, with the 804th Medical Detachment. Uh, she served six years and is currently a Northboro police officer. Um, and I also saw she's a mother of two. So if we can introduce Melissa up to give her presentation. The mic is yours. Hello, I'm Melissa Lonergan. I want to start today with a thank you and an immense amount of gratitude for your introduction and for the honor of an invitation to speak before you all. I want to thank Kendra Feldetta, the director of this beautiful senior center of Northboro. It speaks to your character to have remembered a previous comment made to you by our past chief regarding little old me and to Jeff Farrell, the town of Northboro's veteran service officer. Thank you for all you do. Your continued support and service to our veterans does not go unnoticed, even though today will be the first time we've met in person. Uh, we're brothers and sisters in a bond like no other. 
Thank you both for your service and what you do to support those who need our loyalty and respect, especially after their time in service. And to my current chief, Chief Griffin, thank you for passing along the invite and allowing me to stand before you and all our great veterans and their families with the faith that I can make this day somewhat memorable for everyone and to represent our great police department that I'm proud to serve. I'm truly honored. Thank you, Chief. To all the veterans and their families present here today, Gold Star families and their survivors who are here, thank you from the deepest, most vulnerable place in my heart for your service. Nobody truly knows what it's like to serve this great country until you've done it, supported someone through it, or wiped the tears off little children to mark the days on the calendar until mom or dad comes home. The guilt that can arise when you're thousands of miles away doing something you know in your heart and soul was where you were supposed to be and still doing it. A small sacrifice for a lifetime of growth. That's what I was told. And I will forever stand by that and share with any fellow soldiers still serving today. Veterans Day is a time to celebrate you and honor all those who served our nation in uniform. Now, don't forget to get a list of, a great, of all the great area restaurants that offer discounts to us veterans nationwide on November 11th, right? <laughs> One of the benefits. I would like to take this opportunity for all the veterans in this room to stand or raise your hand, whichever is easiest for you, so we can recognize you and your service to our country. Thank you all. Now for a little history. Veterans Day was originally called Armistice Day. <clears throat> Hostilities in World War I ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 when the peace agreement with Germany went into effect. Armistice Day began as a celebration of recognizing the victory of the Allied forces of World War I. It was renamed Veterans Day by President Dwight Eisenhower in 1954 and is now dedicated to veterans of all wars. So today, we honor all our veterans who unselfishly placed their lives on the line for our freedom. You all were ordinary people until you heard the call of duty and answered it, leaving your families, homes, lives, and fought to protect our country so we'd all continue living the lives we know. When I was a little girl growing up in Boston as far back as I can remember, on Sundays my grandparents would pick me and my sisters up for Sunday school. I had a single mom and there were four of us at the time, so she took that as a bit of a break. They would pull up in their bright green Cadillac with the honk of the horn to let us know they arrived. The first thing I would notice when I hopped in the big back seat was a red poppy, always tied on the passenger side visor. New ones would come and go as time went on. It would be a constant reminder of support, pride, and peace. That poppy taught me at a young age what it meant to remember those who fought for our freedoms and to be proud of that. As far back as I can remember, I had an instinct to help others. My mother being the first. I knew she needed help with my siblings and things around the house, and I just did it. I was never asked or made to, but wanted to, to help ease her sorrows and struggles that I could sense. It continued as I started working at 14 years old while going to school saving all my tips to pass on to my mother for Christmas time. Sorry. Buying my first car before I could drive just to help my family. I couldn't wait to get, I couldn't wait to go to the store for milk when my mom needed it. I would look around and seek out ways to help. I ended up getting my bachelor's degree in human services, no surprise. <laughs> A low-paying career, and not where the money was, I would hear. Never had I cared about that, just that I knew I wanted to be of service to others. Was it church that helped put me in this direction? Was it my love of country, the devotion of adults around me who guided me? I'm not sure. I just knew to never ignore that gut feeling inside you, your internal compass, that feeling that you know when you're doing the right or wrong thing. I had my two children, and hit a point where I lost my own purpose. I was a mother, daughter, wife, all those titles, but forgot who I was and what I wanted. With the support of my family, of course, I enlisted with the United States Army Reserve, a dream I never thought possible. 
I made sergeant February of 2023. My active contract ended in January of this year, so I'm a pretty new veteran. I'm currently in the IRR status, which stands for Individual Ready Reserve, until January 2026. If the president needs me, I will go. But until then, I'm a veteran today alongside all of you great people. And for that, I am proud. All the great skills I learned in the cold, dark Fort Sill, Oklahoma will never leave me. Although I never fought in a war or deployed across the world, I was ready and stayed ready for six years. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. These are the core values that guide me today. Without these values, I know I would not be standing before you today as the first female police officer in this great town in over 22 years. My three-year anniversary is coming up in April. The personal growth I've made alongside other great public servants is more than I could have imagined. Through ups and downs and whatever may come, we get through. Perseverance and fortitude stand, stand firm in our department. I am so proud to work for the town of Northboro where I get to serve you great people. The entire community has opened their hearts and homes to me, and many people know me by first name. From the kids on the bikes who may or may not annoy some of you, <laughs> to the employees at the local coffee shops who know my order and ask about my family. The small touches of a small town leave me filled with love. I may be a city kid at heart, but being accepted and loved by your small town has been one of the most special parts of my adult career in life. I can't wait to come to work and serve this town and work along some of the best cops I know. I owe this all to my time and service. So, to all of you beautiful veterans, families of veterans, and people here with me, thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifices, for your valor, for the things you carry, for protecting us, and for defending our rights. Thank you to all our veterans for your courage, strength, and dedication to keeping us safe. And if you ever want to share your story with me, I would love that. Thank you. Before we carry on with lunch, uh, we have Dr. John Zawacki who's here to do the benediction. Uh, he is, for those that don't know, uh, one of the kindest, most humble man men that I have been so lucky to meet in my time here. Uh, we don't see each other very often, but uh, he will never say so. But he's a, a wonderful, wonderful person, and we're very lucky to have him here today. And good, good morning. Uh, it is an honor. Uh, thank you for the honor of uh, asking me to lead you in prayer. It's a humbling uh, privilege. So let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thanks for this beautiful day that you've gathered us here today. And we are in, you are in our presence. And we, as we gather to commemorate and honor all those who have served in our armed forces. Father, we especially commend to you the souls of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our beloved country. May they rest in your peaceful presence for eternity. And we call to mind also to, at this time those men and women who continue to experience the mental, the physical, and emotional wounds of war. We commend to you all those who now wear the colors of, our, of the various branches, who are in active duty. Shield them from all harm, and bring safely home all those who are overseas. Lord, we, we love our country, and at the present time, we're a divided country so much we just came through a political election, and you know that. We ask you to grace our president-elect, to reunite us, to work for peace, 
to always work for those legislation which is for the common good. And Lord, bring your blessing to everyone here and all their loved ones. They have gathered in your name to honor our veterans. Let them know your love. Let them experience your peace. And we offer this prayer with grateful hearts. But we cannot forget all those people who prepare this meal, who serve this meal, and we give thanks for them. And in your name, amen. <laughs>